Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to The Health Show, here only on the Islam Channel with me, Alastair Greener. Well, we're back for another weekly health show. In fact, it's our fourth series as we continue to tackle everyday health problems. Each week, we'll be joined by a health expert within their specialised field and we'll discuss the prevention of health issues or concerns that we or our loved ones may face. Looking at how you can change your health and lifestyle for the better, The Health Show offers an alternative viewpoint from our health experts who attend the show, which we hope will guide you in the right direction. So if you suffer from any medical issues or have any health concerns, or for that matter if you know anybody who does, then do tune in each week as we'll be covering a wide range of topics over the series and offering an alternative viewpoint from our health experts. If you'd like any further information on our programme or any of the topics that we discuss, then please do get in touch at healthshow at islamchannel.tv. That's healthshow at islamchannel.tv. Now, we begin our first show with laser hair removal. This is a cosmetic procedure that uses a powerful laser or intense pulsed light known as IPL to remove any unwanted hair. Amongst other reasons for wanting to remove hair, it can be helpful for women with hirsutism, which is excessive hair growth. To discuss the treatments, it's great to welcome senior technician Mayel from Pulse Light Clinic, who has over six years of experience in the sector. Mayel, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me. And great that you're our first guest of the fourth series. Yeah. So excited. great to see lots to talk about yeah. uh, in just a few moments. But before I talk to Mayel, let's take a look at this clip about Pulse Light Clinic and their treatments. Pulse Light Clinic is a very busy clinic and we treat a lot of people. We always stay up to date with the best technology. And I think that is one of the reasons why we're one of the most successful clinics in London. We have been established since 2001 and we specialise in many laser treatments including laser hair removal, tattoo removal, acne and scar removal, IPL and fat freezing. They are all the most advanced technology. When you come in for the consultation, what I will normally do is ask you what it is that you are looking for. If I think that that is something we can achieve, then I will tell you that. I will also tell you how many treatments you're going to need, what to expect from the treatment, and also what I expect from you, um, how to be prepared and ready for the treatment. And we will do a little patch so you can see exactly how it feels, what it's going to look like. You will actually be able to see some of the results that we have personally had in this clinic. Um, what's worked very well, the kind of feedback that we're getting from the clients. Well, I'm 39 now, so, and I have started to notice um, some pigmentation on my cheekbones and on my face, but I found the treatment to be really effective in actually getting rid of any dark spots and also generally just making your skin look a bit more youthful. I immediately noticed the difference. I got no more ingrown hairs, uh, it was gone for a really long time and then when it grew back the, the retreatment was just really swift and easy and I knew exactly what to expect and the girl that I had doing my treatments was so professional but so friendly that it was just really comfortable the whole way through. We have three clinics in London, two in the City of London and one next to Tom Courtright. We are open seven days a week and it's very easy to book your consultation online so hopefully you will be seeing a Pulse Clinic. Well, Mayel, it was great to get that overview, but maybe just go through it again a little bit. First of all, tell us what exactly is this method of removal of excessive hair? Sure. So laser hair removal is a um, type of treatment that basically laser beams are used. Uh, what happens is the person will actually completely stop the hair growth with the lasers, if that makes sense. So let me backtrack a little bit. <laughs> um, so the, our method that we use, uh, we have different lasers. We've got the Alexandrite laser, which is more for lighter skin types, and the Andiag laser, which is for darker skin types. Um, the way that it works is the same. It basically goes to the root of the hair. Um, the laser goes all the way to the root and it stunts the growth completely. Um, that process does take four to eight weeks, depending on the area of the body, to then start growing back. 
but every single time you're permanently damaging 10 to 15% of the hair in the area. So we do have guidelines for different areas of the body. Um, the face, for instance, can take a lot more sessions than an area like the legs. Um, but the ultimate result is to get a reduction of the hair growth, a uh, much smoother skin, um, a lot less ingrowns, and uh, definitely an improvement in if the person's had anything like ingrown hairs, um, they will definitely improve. And how does it actually work? What's this laser actually doing? Um, so the laser is actually damaging uh, the root, the follicle. Um, our hair has a hair growth cycle. Um, what we want to do with the laser is reach it at the anagen stage, which is where it's uh, connected to everything else in, in the body. When we are able to actually hit the hair, which everybody does every, every six weeks, um, then that stops the hair growing. So you're actually just damaging the follicle every single time and completely getting rid of it as well. Let's come to the reasons that people will come to you because obviously we all have, you know, hair on our body, all over the body in different places and so on. But for some people, it's, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's excessive or it's growing maybe in places people don't particularly want, for example, um, women who have maybe hair on their faces and so on. Give us a bit of an idea of the sort of people who come to you and the types of problems that they encounter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we do get women that come in and that have excessive hair growth on the face. Um, if it is thick, dark hair, then the laser will work very well. Uh, what happens initially with um, our lasers is we either we do it or we ask the people to shave before the session, especially if it's very coarse, thick hair. Um, it does need to be shaved before because then all the energy of the laser is going to go to the root of the hair. Uh, completely stunts the growth, so the person will actually not have any hair growth for a good three to four weeks on the face. Um, when they come back, four weeks later, we do ask them to make sure that they don't have a tan. It's very important with laser, um, but it's fine to be any skin type. So we treat up from very light skin, like yours, up to black skin. It's not a problem. Uh, but the tan is different because a tan does mean that somebody has essentially burnt the, uh, the outside of their skin. So if you put a laser on that, you can damage the skin. So we're very careful with that. Um, but then what happens is that they come in um, we do the laser on top with uh, our lasers, the Candela Gentle Max Pro, which is the FDA approved laser for hair removal. Uh, you only have to hit each area once. You don't have to go over it lots of times. Um, so it is over fairly quickly. You could do a face in about 15 to 20 minutes, for instance. And in terms of the people who come to you, because I can imagine for many, you know, the, the whole thing of having, you know, for, for a woman to have excessive facial hair is embarrassing. There's a bit of a taboo about going for help. And I'm, I'm sure probably many women suffer in silence. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd say actually one for one, most women that come in will apologise um, and they will say things like, oh, I'm so sorry, do you have anyone? And every single time I, I always tell them, look, this is really, really common and a lot of women have this problem. Um, even for men as well, sometimes men have um, hair in areas that they don't want on their backs, on their shoulders. We get a lot of men that come in too and that feel ashamed um, to uh, you know, go to the beach or, or things like that. And I, I think that you should be confident, whatever, whatever. And that's the big thing, isn't it? Mm. Because at the end of the day, when someone feels something's not quite right, you know, we feel very self-conscious. Yeah. And I can imagine for a lot of people, it takes quite a bit of courage to go and seek help from someone outside of their community, outside of their family unit. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think um, with that, I would just say um, to make sure that you choose a clinic that uh, has a lot of experience, um, has good reviews. Uh, a lot of our customers actually come from referrals. So their friends and family have told them about us. Uh, they've seen the results. Um, if you look even our Instagram, our website, we're always updating. So you can always see um, how much the results are affecting people's And one of lives. the big things for many people is, of course, that nobody will know, even their closest family sometimes, that they're having treatment. They've maybe been shaving or using mm. alternative methods to get rid of the hair. Yeah. 
Can you really reassure people about the confidentiality that if they come to you or a reputable clinic like yours, that actually no one will know they can continue to be as private as they wish? Absolutely. Um, if they want to keep it to themselves, that's absolutely not a problem. Everything is confidential. Uh, all of our practitioners are female, so whether it's a man or, or a woman, it tends to be quite a comfortable environment. If the person is uh, a little bit scared, you know, to, to show their body to different people, we do try and keep them with the same practitioner. So they just have to let us know at reception, you know, I'd like to put back in with blah, and then we will make sure that they stay with that person. Now, coming to the actual process itself, mm -hmm. there's going to be, people will have many preconceptions about the process, you know, so is it going to hurt? Sure. Is it going to leave any sort of mark or anything that will maybe give other people an indication as I've been? So talk us through that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it does hurt a little bit. It really depends on the person. So usually when people come in for the consultation, um, the one thing that I do have to let people know is to, to be eligible for hair removal you do have to have mainly thick dark hair so it's one thing that I do have to say because sometimes people come in and they've got very very fluffy light hair it doesn't pick up as well on, on uh, with that white hair doesn't pick up because the laser bounces back um, but yeah when when they come in we do do a patch test so this is where we will do a small area of what they want to have treated and if they want multiple um, areas of the body, we will patch test every area of the body so they have an exact idea of how it's going to feel um, and what to expect as well. It kind of feels like, a, yeah, it feels like an elastic band hitting the skin. I'd say that that, that is a good analogy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and again, when when we look at the, the effect that it has on an individual, you talked about this of patch testing. How does that work? Yep. So in the patch test, say somebody was to come in and they wanted to do uh, their legs, we would um, ask them for the patch test not to shave because we want to see the, the texture of the hair and that's going to help us um, to get the right settings for the person. And then we will actually shave a small patch of the on, on the legs so that we can do the laser on that particular area. So the person will be able to see exactly how it feels. It's exactly what you would do in the treatment, but a fraction of the amount. So it's a good way to have a bit of a test. And you, you mentioned there about the whole concept of having a free consultation first. So if anybody's a little concerned about the effect or how it's going to be, you have that sort of method, if you like, just to see absolutely. how people feel before yeah, you even start. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the time people come in and, and they've got so many that they're, they're so scared and they think it's going to be so painful and the consultation really does groove them in a little bit because we tell them everything to, to do not do how to prepare for the sessions um, and then we do the patch test on the various areas of, of, of the body if they want to do more than one area and a lot of the time they leave feeling relieved because they know exactly what to expect um, you know they've they've had a feel for the environment for the clinic uh, they've met me or another consultant, so they do leave feeling a lot happier. And because the, you're saying shave before you go, there's no difference visually mm. um, before and after then? For the treatment, you sh yeah, you shave the night before, soapy wet shave, because you don't want to dry shave an area and then you've got uh, dry shaving as well as the laser on top. Um, but for the patch test, it's okay not to shave before the session because we do want to see the texture of the hair and we might just shave a small area so that we can actually do the patch test. And in terms of side effects, we've always concerned about yeah. that. Is there any sensation afterwards? Is there anything visually different? Yep. Um, so especially I find the thicker the hair is, um, the person will get uh, bumps called uh, erythema and edema, so it's going to go a little bit red, uh, the follicles are going to swell slightly. It is a similar, similar to waxing, but the heat might last a little bit longer. Um, it could be that any heat is gone within a few hours, sometimes it might take a little bit longer than that, it might be just a little bit hot maybe for a day, so we do say to avoid hot showers after treatment and uh, a lot of excessive exercise. But of course you're going to guide people through that whole process. Exactly. Do people react differently at all? Yeah, I, I yes. So even though we do have uh, guidelines for everybody to take home, I do always tell people, you know, that everyone does have 
you know, everyone's body is slightly different, everyone's going to react slightly differently, um, but yeah, we will guide people through that. And, and the patch test tells them a lot as well because they see what's happened, they know that it's normal. It can be a little bit itchy sometimes the next day, that's also very normal. Um, but it does depend on the person because some people it doesn't even go red, it's not itchy at all. So, yeah. We hear all the time on the news about people maybe going to other countries having treatments done because sometimes they're a little bit more economical mm. and so on. What sort of safeguards do we have in this country to ensure that anybody who's offering a service like yours mm. is completely qualified, is going to offer a completely safe and secure service? Well, it's you really do have to make sure, I think, a lot to do with the machines that are being used uh, with that. So if somebody has, a lot of the time I get people coming in that have had treatments in other countries and I ask them what machine was used and often they will know from the website or uh, from the clinic and it'll be, for instance, the Candela Gentle Max Pro, um, which as I said is, is FDA approved. There are others as well. Um, so that's one of the things and then it's always good to check on the website what qualification the practitioners have uh, we're all level four trained um in the uk i think you do have to be but yeah it, it's good to check those things online the other thing i would say with that though laser hair removal is a process. It's not something that you just do one time and, and that's it. Yeah, let's talk about that yeah. because, you know, somebody comes for the first time, it's worked. How often do people need to come back and does that change over periods of time or is it one of those things you're just continually going to be doing? Yeah, good question. So, um, if it's a body area, uh, like I said, the legs uh, on women, bikini and underarms, um, the person will come in every six to eight weeks. Uh, the reason why that is is because it actually takes that long for the hair to grow back. When I say the hair grow back, it is going to be less and it is going to be thinner every single time. But to get the full results, uh, I always recommend a pack of eight um, and I would expect a 60 to 80 percent reduction of the hair in the area at the end of eight treatments. After that, a lot of our clients will still do top ups every six months or every three months. Again, uh, we will reassess the person. Some people, they have hardly any hair at that point and they're happy to just wax every couple of months. Some people that started off with a lot more hair, um, for instance, people that suffer with uh, PCOS, which is where they, um, their hormones make them grow a lot more hair. Now, PCOS, that, that's a, a, con a known condition. Give us a little bit more of a detail about that. Sure, so polycystic ovaries is uh, yeah, a condition where the person can grow a lot more hair uh, that women have and um, a lot of the time they, they know that they've got it and they know that's the reason why they've got more hair growth so uh, they come informed their doctors already told them a lot of the time doctors also recommend laser hair removal of people with PCOS I do warn them that they're gonna get a reduction and it's gonna work very well but because they've got more hair growth and because of their hormones uh, they will probably need more treatments than somebody that doesn't um, doesn't have it we're going to meet Tracy in the second half, who is one of your clients, yeah. and we'll get a, an idea from her, the difference it's made to her life and the increase in confidence. Maybe give me a, a few examples of other people and how transformative it's been for them to have this treatment. Because at, at the end of the day, if you're not having to be concerned about how you might appear visually to other people, mm. that can make a big difference, can't it? Absolutely. I mean, um, I'd say for a lot of women, one of the things is uh, if, if you do shave your underarms, it's something that you have to do in the morning and then sometimes at night as well, especially if you, you've got darker hair. Um, with laser hair removal, they don't have to worry about that. It's not as uncomfortable. It's not as itchy. Um, we have, so we have a lot of clients that are always so surprised. They might start with a small area. Um, they might do a whole thing. Another thing women don't like is something called strawberry legs where they get a lot of uh you can it's just because the hair is thick you can see all of the follicles visibly and um, women don't like that so the more laser you do the actual follicles start to get so small that um the skin is very smooth which is something that really helps with people's confidence and how they feel within themselves. You talked earlier on about how some people are recommended by doctors with PCOS and, and so on. From a confidence point of view, mm -hmm. you know, that's such a major difference. And give us maybe some idea of maybe uh, maybe younger people who've been recommended to come to you for treatment and, and the effect that that's had on their lives. 
Sure. Um, I've had some people come in, um, uh, young women, maybe between 16 and... Oh, no, not 16, sorry, I can't say it. Between <laughs> 18, you have to be 18 to see laser hair removal. Uh, between 18 and 21, I've had some people come in um, with their mums sometimes and um, with a lot of thick hair growing. And when you have thick, very thick hair growing on your face, um, it shows because you get pigmentation as well. So you get dark marks, especially if you've got um, darker skin, more melanin. Um, so I have seen people really benefit so much because the, the skin actually starts to clear up because that thick hair is not irritating it anymore. So it starts to really smooth out and their, confi their confidence starts to rebuild. And is this something that, that's genetic? Is, is it likely that if your mother has this that it's likely that you'll have it too? It can be genetic, yeah, of course. Certain uh, countries, there's just more, more hair growth for both men and women. Um, but sometimes it's also up other things and hormone development. So for people, you know, again, we've talked quite a bit about people who might think this is just me because it's not something that's discussed a lot. Mm. Give us some idea of how many people do suffer from PCOS or other forms of excessive hair growth that requires them to, you know, maybe to shave or to wax or, or to come for laser hair treatment. Um, I mean, I, I can't give you an exact percentage, um, but if I was to think in terms of, uh, from my experience, like weekly, the amount of people I see with PCOS, I'd say it would be at least um, maybe 20 to 30 percent of the people that I see, because it doesn't just affect the face. It does mean that they have more hair growth on their whole body, um, and it tends to be thicker hair as well. So. Quite a lot of people come in with, with that problem. And another thing I, I would say is some people, they don't actually have PCOS and they've been checked and they, and they don't have it, but they do have a lot of excessive hair growth. Um, so even then, because so, sometimes people try to find out why they have it and fix it that way, but with laser hair removal, it, it, it will really get uh, a lot better and a lot easier to deal with. Well, we're going to hear in the second half from Tracy, who's yeah. going to give us firsthand the yeah. difference it's made to her and her confidence. But for the moment, thanks very much indeed, Mael, and uh, look forward to finding out more straight after the break. Now, we should stress that should you suffer from any medical problems or health concerns, it's always highly recommended that you contact your doctor or GP, as the health show gives you an alternative viewpoint to the health concern being discussed. We'll see you right after the break. Welcome back to The Health Show, where we've been discussing laser hair removal with Mael, who's a senior technician from Pulse Light Clinic. Now, for this part of the programme, we're also joined by Tracy Kiss, who's one of the clinic's clients. Tracy, welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, it's going to be really exciting to hear about your experience and what a difference it's made mm. to your life. But we're just going to be showing another VT just before we do that, because over the last 16 years, the Pulse Light Clinic has developed a huge amount of experience in the use of lasers for hair removal. These include intense pulsed light, diode lasers and many others. The clinic offers free consultations and carries out patch tests. So let's just take a quick look. I had four treatments so far and I had my underarms and my bikini area done. Um, with my bikini area, it took a little bit longer for me to see the results because the hairs in that area were a lot more thicker than my underarms. But with my underarms, I started seeing the results immediately. The hair was like producing by a lot that I was so shocked there was times where I couldn't even need to wax until it was time for my next appointment. Um, but I also noticed that my ingrown hairs reduced a lot. I didn't have as much ingrown hairs as I used to be before, especially my bikini area, but now it's a lot less and everything just feels a lot smoother. Well, it's been like welcoming. It felt, even though at first I was so nervous of the fact of the area, especially the areas that I was getting done, but I felt really comfortable when I was with the technicians. They were really um, helpful, friendly, and also I noticed that um, the area is really like, it's really inspiring. You see loads of posters, everything is very glamorous looking, so you do feel like you're in for a glamorous treatment. And I feel like when it comes to laser hair removal, we underestimate what it actually does. I feel like ever since I've had it done, I've had more confidence with my underarms. I don't mind wearing, Obviously I wouldn't wear a vest out, but I don't mind wearing vests when I'm at home and I don't feel 
get cautious of anything, um, even if there's like my cousins or somebody coming over, I don't mind because my underarms are literally clean as hell. So I've just been, um, I think it's confidence that you have on the outside as well, not just on the inside. I wouldn't say it's painful, I would say it's rather uncomfortable in some areas. With my underarms, it literally felt like someone was just splashing warm water on me. It was amazing, and then the pulling sensation afterwards. So when it comes to religion, I think a lot of people get worried that they can't do laser hair removal because of um, Islam and not being able to remove the hair. But I think when it, for me personally, I think I don't see it as me doing anything wrong. I see it as a little bit more of me just removing the hair as I would shaving. If anything, it's no different to shaving or no different to waxing. Um, but yeah, I think it depends on everyone and everyone has their own interpretation and everybody wants to do things how they see fit when it comes to religion. And I think nobody should be able to, should be telling someone, this is wrong, don't do it, or this is right, this is how you should do things. So I think it's up to the person. But also, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's much different to shaving or waxing. So I've been literally been recommending it to everyone, like not even just family and friends, literally people, colleagues, everyone. Um, I think when it comes to laser hair removal, it's honestly saved me a lot of time. It's made life easier for me, like I don't have to worry about shaving or having to um, worry about buying a razor I've saved money to. Um, and also, it, it, when you think about it, the amount of time that you put into shaving in a, in a year and how much laser hair removal t um, saves you time, it's ridiculous. Like, you don't even want to go back to shaving, you want to just start getting it done straight away. And I honestly wish that I started sooner. It was fascinating watching the effect it had on your patient there. And for you, Tracy, maybe you can just talk us through the difference that it's made to you in your confidence by having this treatment. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, before I had laser hair removal, I shaved every day. Mm -hmm. It was something that was almost a pet peeve to me to say it's so inconvenient to have scratchy skin. And I also found that trying to sleep at night, as strange as that may seem, it was very uncomfortable when you have regrowth of hair mm. because it comes back very blunt and sharp. So to run your hand down your skin, you would feel it within just hours of shaving. So when I was sleeping at night and my legs would touch, it would wake me up and irritate me, mm. and particularly in the summer when it's <laughs> warm. So in having the hair removed, instantly it's so much softer, it's cleaner, I feel, um, and it's less noticeable because the follicles do close, so you don't have that grey shadow that I felt very self-conscious of by having pale skin. So. And that's the thing, isn't it? It's, mm. it's being self-conscious of something. And when you have this treatment and you no longer have to feel self-conscious about something, what does that do for your mental health and your confidence? It's such a freeing experience. It's something that maybe other people might not notice. They might not say, oh, you have stubble from shaving. Um, or if you look very close, maybe it is very noticeable. But you feel when you have something that you don't agree with, that you don't want to have, that once it's removed, it's a weight off of your shoulders. Mm. And it, to have that confidence, you stand taller, you smile more, you're more interactive and communicative with people. Your day is just so much more uplifting and it well, shows. Well, we saw that with the patient there on the VT. You, <laughs> yeah. know, the, uh, yeah. you could tell from her smile what a mm. difference it was making yeah. for her. And one of the things that's it's quite interesting is when we look at, for women particularly, who go through different stages of their lives mm. with mm. their hormones changing and so on, is there different stages of your life where you might suffer from more excessive hair growth than maybe at other stages? Yeah, I think it's completely normal for women to start noticing more hair in their early 20s um, more than before. Uh, also, after pregnancy, sometimes women can de develop more hair growth, uh, again, because of the hormone changes that have happened in their body. Um, and also, again, when women start getting a bit older, uh, again, same thing, hormone changes, uh, menopause, that can also make... Uh, hair more apparent or in areas that they so it's one of those things you might think to yourself actually this has never happened before why is it starting right. now and if you don't know that actually that's just a part a normal part of aging absolutely. you wouldn't know and of course this is men as well isn't it absolutely yeah um, we get so many men that come in and I think it's more even more of a taboo for men because they don't want 
um, they they don't want to you know admit that they don't like something a lot of the time mm. but um, we get so many men come in and, and they're so happy with, with the treatment and and it is very very common for, for men to feel self-conscious about the hair on their back or on their shoulders sometimes their chest as well mm. your boyfriend yeah so I have a, a kind of his and hers treatment <laughs> when I come in for, for my hair removal my boyfriend also mm. has his chest hair removed and I think in recent years, it's gone from being manly with lots of body hair to now men have to be so groomed mm. and they feel that what they naturally have is too much. And my boyfriend is very self-conscious about his chest hair. If he takes his top off on the beach, he, he feels that people are going to stare at him for being hairy. So in having laser hair removal, it's really thinned it out. Um, he doesn't have to shave, which is amazing, and he feels so much more confident because of it. And that's a massive mm. part of this, and I know I keep coming back to it, but it is such a big part mm. when we talk about mental health issues which have been so much in the news of late. Yeah. And it is both male and female Absolutely. mental health. Absolutely. And just having that body confidence can make just a huge difference to someone. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that um, um, with women as well, one, one point that I will make is obviously we do have to see some of their more intimate areas and sometimes women won't want to do treatment because they don't want people to see that but I, I do have to say it, it really is part of our job we really do try to make you feel as comfortable as you can and there, there is nothing strange uh, you know I think everyone should be confident mm, with, with what they have but also our, our job is really just to take care of you and um, and, and help reduce that. Mm -hmm. um. Now you talked earlier on about you know if you have very pale hair, if there isn't a difference in colour between your skin and the hair, you also said you have to be 18 before you have it done. Are there any other requirements for treatment? Are there any maybe medical conditions that people have that would prevent them from yeah, being able to have um, the treatment? Yeah, so I mean we will go through all of that in the consultation. So if the person's not sure, uh, you know, not to worry, the, uh, the main ones are outlined in our consultation form but yeah there's various things sometimes people are on photosensitive medication um, where yeah the laser can actually impact and hurt their skin a lot more um, Roaccutane is something people take when they have acne and that makes you very very sensitive to light so you can't do laser when you're taking that um, obviously we uh, don't take women that are pregnant um, uh, what else? I mean, there's quite a lot, but... I mean, <laughs> but again, as you yeah. say, you go along for this free yeah. consultation, you go and see someone, and then you go through all of that, and we'll any fears everything. that you might have will be allayed yeah, at that point. Yeah, if there's anything you're not sure, or even if, if we're not sure, we, we want you to get the best treatment. Mm -hmm. We will ask you to go and get um, something from your uh, GP or, or your doctor, um, if people have had cancers in the past sometimes. Um, so we will also, from our end, really make sure that we take the best responsibility and the, the look after you the best that we can because we don't want you coming in. And, and just and just before we come back to Trace and talk about more of, of what you've been through, looking at your typical clientele, you know, I know you were mentioning before we went on air that you have many Muslims who come to you. Maybe give us an indication of why particularly they're coming to you and the sort of issues that maybe they have, which are slightly different maybe from others. I think um, in terms of Muslims, yeah, we have a lot that come in. Um, it's, it's the same reasons, I think. I think with, especially women, it's, it's a lot to do with how it feels for you. It's not necessarily about other people mm. looking at you, is it? It's, yeah. it's really, and I think it's exactly the same with the women that we have uh, that are Muslim. I think they just want to feel more comfortable in their skin a lot of the time, um, even if not, they're not showing it to everyone. They, they have a, a lot of thick hair, just genetically, um, um, a lot more thick, dark hair than somebody that maybe is very pale and hardly has any hair, they don't even have to think about it. So, I mean, I know that it's something that I've personally um, suffered with myself, just coming from a Mediterranean background. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's the same reasons. We just want to feel more comfortable. And, and coming back to, to you, Tracy, you know, you've... When, tell us a little bit about your journey from when you first started having the treatments and the where frequency where you are now and so on, yeah. yeah. We no need to give a demonstration, but you oh, know, no, no. give us an idea <laughs> of, of that journey. Yeah, well, I started off, I've been shaving since I was a teenager. Uh, 
and it's the kind of embarrassment at school where you wear a school skirt and you don't have long socks anymore because you're a teenager and if you do have any skin on show you naturally have hair almost everywhere on your body and as it gets darker you feel more and more self-conscious and my only method that I reverted to was shaving because I found waxing very uncomfortable and it also reddened my skin and was very mm -hmm. itchy. So to avoid that, I would shave once or twice a day. That then caused the hairs to be very thick and dark and it was more noticeable between shaving that it was returning. So I found the older that I got, the more frequent I shaved the more money it cost and the less happy I was with the results. So in having the lasering, it, it really lightened the area immediately from having that graying beneath the skin. Mm. Even to raise my underarms in the gym, mm. I felt that I could put my arms up and not worry that it looked as though I hadn't shaved. Um, to then see that it came back softer and softer each time, that I could spend a week without shaving even, was incredible. It saved me so much time. And even cost-wise, it's probably the same as a gym membership. Mm -hmm. It's not ridiculously expensive to have very effective treatments um, with long-term results. So I guess it's the taboo of us not discussing body hair mm -hmm. and unwanted things. We don't want to be embarrassed or mm -hmm. feel that there's something wrong with us because there's not. You know, we're all natural and and we should be able to have that choice, if we wish to, to do something safe and effective as a long-term treatment. And certainly for you, it's, you know, it, it's helped, as you say, with your confidence and so on. How long have you been having the treatment now and how frequently do you need it now? When I first actually came to Pulse Light a few years ago, had six blocks of treatment, six weeks apart, which was wonderful. And now I'm popping back just for a top up in between. So once you've had that initial process and you've got on top of the hair, you kind of break it down. It's then just intermittent. So it's far less afterwards. Um, it's something I'm very happy to do. It's so quick and easy. And I'm one of the fortunate mm. ones where I don't really feel anything. So mm. I just lay there and have a nice relaxing time. <laughs> nice chat. Yeah. Nice chat. Well, that's the way to do it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And in terms of, you know, any long term mm. effects or, you know, people thinking that, you know, am I going to be doing this for the rest of my life? As mm. you say, it's, mm. it's, it, it becomes more and more periodic it after does. a period of time. It does. It does depend on the person. And with that, some people, they might need a little bit more than, than Tracy did. But, yeah, absolutely. And I think you made a good point as well in terms of um, when women have to shave every single day, mm -hmm. it does make it a lot worse. It does make the hair growth a lot worse. It makes it a lot more itchy. You're actually growing a lot of hairs out, out of mm. each follicle after a while, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, multiple hairs. Yeah. Yeah. So with, with laser, it, it starts to get so fine and, and uh, little that you don't... And is that the same them. on male skin? It is exactly the same on male skin. Um, men do have, uh, tend to have thicker hair, but that doesn't necessarily mean more treatments. Your boyfriend no. didn't have to do too many. Yeah, and when he had his, the first treatment was the worst. You know, it's, it's treating very thick hair that has had years and years of growth. And he noticed when he returned for the second time, he kind of psyched himself up because he's not very good <laughs> with discomfort. Um, and... He, on a scale rating, it was half as noticeable the next time mm. for the discomfort of it. Mm. Um, and with the lasers now, technology is incredible. There's blowing cold air onto the skin. It takes the heat away from it. So really, it's just a very quick and simultaneous thing that we could both do together and go out straight afterwards, you know. It's now, discreet. many people will have been just like you. They, they will be watching now thinking, yeah, I might get round to that or whatever. What was it that just finally pushed you to the point mm -hmm. of saying, you know what, I'm going, to, I'm going to have a look. I'm going to go for my consultation and talk about it. What was it that pushed you over the, over the line? It was actually um, my boyfriend was sat on the sofa with me and we were watching a film and he happened to brush past my leg and he said, oh, shouldn't you shave? And I said, well, I shaved an hour ago in the shower. So that's when I kind of realised that my very best technique of hair removal wasn't even good enough mm. to be undetectable. Mm. So I looked for a more permanent method that was so much better. And I and wish it's much How did you find the clinic? How, did you, how were you aware of them? Um, well, I'm always really up on health and safety, so I googled online. I looked at previous patients, I looked at their qualifications um, and made sure that 
they were a leading specialist. I think coming to London is definitely a good indication that they have investment in their machinery, they're well looked after, the staff are knowledgeable, and I know that I can put my safety into their hands. So for me, I'm, I'm kind of one of those really in-depth people that need to know that it's the right yeah. thing to do. I think you shouldn't rush into things, do your research. And and Mael, then... you, I get the impression that you're very much the cutting edge mm. of the technology here. Mm. What sort of improvements or changes have we seen over the last you know, few years mm. um, and what's around the corner? Where, where are we headed? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I think that the improvements are always that it's becoming much more comfortable, uh, much more bearable and less painful. Um, so with laser, and those are the main things, but also the results are, are getting better. So when they started, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was more about thinning the hair, whereas now we're able to actually eliminate the hair um, and get really good results. So, yeah, it, it's always getting updated. And London's actually a really good place to do treatment because um, it's so competitive. There's uh, so many people in London. So we, we, we've got hundreds of people coming in every, every week um, and our experience is only getting better and better. And a final question for you both. A again, we get this all the time. People are watching the show and they think, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe not, not too sure. It all sounds great. <laughs> what would you say to someone who's considering it? Maybe they have got excessive hair growth, mm. which is, you know, maybe uncomfortable psychologically. Mm. Maybe, as we heard on the clip there, there's ingrowing hairs, whatever. What would you say to somebody who's just thinking about it at mm. the moment but haven't quite made that decision to come and talk to you yet? I mean, I'd say you, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. It's going to make such a difference. Just at least come in for a consultation. At least come and, and see for yourself. Mm. What do you say? I think um, we're all automatically apprehensive of everything. Mm. We don't like change. We like routine. And to feel that, you know, we're doing the same things over mm. and over again. But if it's not working, then you need to alter that. You need to try something new. And, you know what's the worst that can happen mm. if you go to a specialist? You're in very good hands and you're going to get amazing results. And it's life-changing. I think um, we always think it's going to be worse than what it really is. Mm. And when you have your first treatment, your patch test, you just think, why was I so concerned? Mm. You know, I should have done this years ago. So, um, yeah, I'd yeah. say that's like the Make main that quote. That, that's yeah. the quote, I should yeah. have done this years ago. So yeah. many people say that when they come in. Well, think, you know, just hearing about mm. the time that you're saving, let alone oh, the fact that there is a cost, you know, mm. associated with mm. it. Yeah. You know, the fact that you're actually saving a huge amount of time and time is often our most precious resource. Yeah. yeah. And, and for people watching, again, your, your particular clinic, you've got your main clinic in London. Yeah, so we've got one near Bank and Monument Station, uh, Cheapside. We've got one Fenchurch Street, uh, very close by, and we've got another one next to Tottenham Court Road. So you can find, find one pretty easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 easily. Just Google us and you'll find us. Dead easy, perfect. <laughs> now, and again, just to, to wrap it up really here, mm -hmm. you know, people look towards the long term. If you could sum up the effect that it has on people's well-being, just having that extra level of confidence mm -hmm. to go out. You know, you hear many comments from your customers who come in to see you. Give us a bit of a flavour of some of the things they say. Apart um, from, I should have come here many I times come years here, ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's just made, it's made life a lot easier. They've saved a lot of time. Um, they can't believe how well it's worked. Um, they, uh, you, the skin feels better. And I do think psychologically, yeah, often people comment on how much happier they are not to have to worry about that. Mm. It's one less thing to have to worry Having about. Having that confidence makes the world of good. And mm. uh, it's been great finding out more. Really appreciate your time coming in. And hopefully we've convinced a few more people not to suffer in silence and to yes. build their confidence and, and have it done. Yeah, thanks Thank you for very much us. indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. I'd like to thank our guests today, Senior Technician Mael from Pulse Light Clinic, and especially to Tracy for coming in to share her story and experience. Now, once again, we must stress that should you suffer from any medical problems or health concerns, it's always highly recommended that you contact your doctor or GP, as the health show gives an alternative viewpoint to the health concern being discussed.
Now, if you'd like to find out any more about today's topic or book a consultation with Pulse Light Clinic, then please do get in touch and email us at healthshow at islamchannel.tv. Again, that's healthshow at islamchannel.tv. Thank you for watching and tune in again next week when we're going to be looking at dental care and the importance of brushing your teeth regularly. Goodbye for now. Assalamu alaikum.